You may have heard the phrase smart meter before, and I want to take a moment to explain how they work. So let's get down to business. Maybe we should start by getting rid of a bunch of junk. Speaking of junk, recently there's been some misinformation floating around the internet about smart meters. So let's take a few minutes to address those concerns and set the record straight. These claims say that smart meters are infringing on your right to privacy, allegedly harmful to your health, are the fourth horseman in the apocalypse that will wreak havoc on your life. Let's address them one by one. A lot of noise has been made about smart meters monitoring the individual actions that take place on the inside of your home. The only problem with that is that smart meters only know how much power you're using, not specifically how you're using that power. And most of the time, the meter is idle. Your power company has kept your data private for decades, and none of that's changing. No one will know whether you're using electricity to run your blender, use your electric toothbrush, or build your new best friend. Smart meters will, however, allow you to make choices that lower bills and shrink your environmental footprint with tools like information displays, facts about use and prices, and set and forget home energy management, which is good for your wallet and good for the planet. But here's the bigger win. Smart meters can pinpoint and fix problems, often before they happen. So if an outage does occur, power can be restored quickly, keeping businesses up and home safe during storms and heat waves. If we get on board with smart grid technologies, it's estimated they'll reduce the cost of power interruptions by more than 75%, saving the American economy more than $150 billion a year. And there is nothing like enduring a recession and a hot August without air conditioning to remind us that that's a sweet deal. Point two, it's alleged that smart meters are harmful to your health. The cornerstone of this argument is based on RF emissions causing cancer. The critical issue with that claim is that science doesn't support it, which is a little more understandable when you remember that this is how many conspiracy theorists do their highly technical research. Well, I think you see how it might be a little tough to get the facts straight. The bottom line is that smart meters do emit radio frequency energy, but so does your radio, and your cell phone, and your microwave, and your baby monitor, and any coffee shop, library, or hotel that has Wi-Fi. In fact, smart meters create less exposure to radio frequency energy than all those things. Even if you cozied up to a smart meter all day, it would require you to snuggle next to one for 375 years before it would equal the exposure of having a daily 15-minute cell phone call over the course of one year. <sighs> Lastly, we have our final claim. A smart meter is the fourth horseman of the apocalypse that will wreak havoc on your life. Look, smart meters are not going to take over your life no matter what stories you hear on the internet. If, however, you're interested in a nice piece of fiction, I'd like to recommend the works of J.R.R. Tolkien. He's dynamite. So here's the final thought. I'm not here to tell you how to manage your power. That's your energy, your business, and your information. But before you make a decision on smart meters, read up on the facts as told by experts and scientists, not actors and alarmists. Go to smartgridcc.org slash smartgrid101 for more information and accurate analysis. Because remember, fact is greater than fiction. So when making a decision about smart meters, put the decision in the most capable hands, yours.